Thank you. So today, what did you talk about? Uh, we had some business to, uh, to enact. We got the business done, but this was really to get us ready for the next 49 days between now and November 6th. And uh, to all of our statewide candidates spoke, as well as Speaker, as, as the Majority Leader Flanagan. And uh, we are ready to go and to win at all levels come November 6th. What, what did you make of primary day? What's, what's your internal analysis of Disappointed by the big numbers? Were you surprised at any of the races? Uh, there were big numbers, uh, uh, and but the bottom line is that 500,000 Democrats, uh, after 25 million being dumped on them about Andrew Cuomo, voted against him. That's a huge number. And you go down ballot from that, uh, he had a very hard time because a lot of people voted for him because of the corruption or a corruption that's around him. Uh, they, uh, a lot of Democrats, I'm sure, held their nose to vote for him to give him his 66 percent. You go down, down ballot, uh, he had a very hard time getting Kathy Hochul even close to 50 percent. You go even more down ballot to the attorney general's race and you find out that he had a very hard time pulling his team, part of his team, Tish James, across the line with 40 percent. He didn't have the pull to do it. It showed that the, even the vote for him was not enthusiastic, besides the 500,000 Democrats who voted against him. Chairman, would you say that one of the lessons that you might have taken away from this uh, primary is that you really should have candidates in every district, Republican candidates, because now you have uh, incumbents who were defeated and you don't have Republicans on the, on the ballot in some of the districts. Oh, we, we have, uh, in most districts, we do have, uh, we do have Republicans. And there are, I'm sure there are a few districts where, regardless of whether we had a candidate or not, they would have a very difficult time running. That just happens to be those districts. But just about every district we've had uh, candidates running. Watching everything unfold in Western New York, what's been kind of your reaction? Well, uh, I, uh, I've left this to our local leaders who are tremendous out there. They know what they're doing. As I understand it, uh, that Congressman uh, Collins decided th that he was not going to run. Uh, and so our leaders there went to work to find out what they would do. And now he's decided he is going to run. So he's going to be running going forward. Uh, he's innocent until proven guilty. And I know he's always done what he thought was in the interest of the people he represented. And in that district, I have no doubt that he's going to win. Was there any concern voiced today about uh, the prospects for keeping the Senate majority? Uh, the, the sense is we are not only uh, going to keep it, but we can augment it and increase it. There are races where we can win uh, and, uh, and, uh, and get back seats that uh, we lost in the but, past. But aren't, isn't there concern with the, it seems like it's going to be a big Democratic turnout if the primary was any indication that would hurt your chances? The it? corruption that surrounds the Cuomo, uh, the, uh, the Cuomo governance, uh, is really motivated our troops to get out there and vote. And uh, they are going to get out there and vote. So I, I think it's going to be a big turnout election. And in that kind of election, I think we can win it. You Chairman, you could you please? A couple seats in the, in the Senate. Who do you think is vulnerable on the Democratic side? Uh, we've got a good tra choice with chance with the Brook seat in Nassau uh, County. And I think we have got a good shot in uh, where Scott Vanderhoff, the five times elected uh, uh, county exec of Rockland County, is uh, running for the Senate seat there. And of course, Senator Carlucci has uh, had a tough primary and is wounded to begin with, and that's the seat that we have held before. I think we can win that one again. Could you please comment on the Simcofelder victory uh, and what you felt? Uh, so he got over 60 percent, and he at the moment is our majority. And in his district, he is very much appreciated, as just about all our Republicans are in their districts. And that's another reason why we will not only hold on to the Senate majority, but we can increase it. Well, are you concerned with the five Republican retirements going on in the Senate? How do you expect to defend those seats? I know that some, like, say, for example, Senator Bonifix district, I know that's a vulnerable seat. What do you, do you have any comment on those? Oh, uh, Annie Rabbit is a really great candidate, and she decided to get in. And uh, 
Uh, so, no, we've got great candidates. Uh, and look, that's part of getting in a younger generation into the, into the, uh, into our Senate uh, Republican majority. So I think this is a good thing that's going on. It's happened in the past. Uh, we, we have seen it where, where there have been empty seats and whether it was Kathy Marchione or whether it was uh, uh, Croce down in Long Island, a younger person stepped up and that was a plus for our majority in the state Senate and that's gonna happen again. The, the New York State needs to have an opposition. If we do not have an opposition uh, to, the, uh, to the democratic dominance in this, in this state, this state is gonna go in the wrong direction. This has happened in Illinois where there's two thirds majority in both houses of the legislature. The people were very unhappy. They elected a Republican governor, but he could not be effective. And believe me, Illinois is going down the tubes. Maybe Illinois can go down the tubes, but we don't want New York State to go down the tubes. This nation cannot afford it. We need to have a Republican majority in the state Senate, but to really get the state going in the direction, we need to have a Republican governor also. You put that combination together, and then we can get the economy of this state going in the right direction. We'll no longer be the least, the highest tax state in the United States with the most burdensome regulations on business, the least business friendly uh, state in the United States. We'll start going in the right direction, like all those Midwestern states already had when they elected Republican governors and legislatures, whether it's Michigan or Wisconsin or Ohio. Uh, we can start going in the right direction if you have. But meanwhile, we at least need to have a very good Republican majority in the state Senate. Chairman, are you discouraged by the numbers, though? I mean, despite all this corruption, despite the horrible bad news week that Cuomo had, right, the last six days, he still got two-thirds of the vote. Is that discouraging? You're right. He, he campaigned ugly. He started calling his opponent an unqualified lesbian, knowing darn well that that would uh, discourage a lot of Democrats from voting for her. Uh, both on, that both on the unqualified and on the lesbian bit. He knows what he's doing, and he ended it Calling, putting out mailers, having his present thug, replacement for Prococo, Larry Schwartz. We all know he's a thug, another one. And he was doing the same thing, uh, putting out an anti-Semitic, dirty anti-Semitic, calling uh, a candidate in Cynthia Nixon, whose two children being brought up in a synagogue, and calling that, that lady anti-Semitic. I've got to tell you, that's beyond the pale. It was ugly. But 25 million of positive ads about him, and the tension of the campaign between him and Cynthia Nixon drew out a large vote. But I repeat again, 500,000 Democrats voted against him, against Andrew Cuomo. Chairman. And a lot of others must have held their nose and voted, uh, and voted for him, because they certainly did not vote for his team, as he called it, down ballot. And by the way, on the attorney general part of that team, on the attorney general part, uh, Tish James claims she's independent of Andrew Cuomo when she had to rely on Andrew Cuomo being part of Andrew Cuomo's team and the 25 million of ads to, in order to get her 40 percent. She cannot be independent. We need to have an independent attorney general, and that attorney general is going to be Keith Wolford, who is our candidate. Well, Chairman, I, can you just tell me about the uh, Tom Basile is having a fundraiser tomorrow night on, as Yom Kippur ends. Uh, is that in, in a district that includes an observant Jewish community? Is that, a, is that something you can endorse oh, or uh, distance you're, yourself? You're, you're, you're talking about local plots. I'll leave that up to... No, uh, no, I'm not. I'll leave that, up to, I'll leave that up to candidate facility. It's a state senate. I mean, to see. And you've Why been talking about the state senate seats. No, no, let, let him answer this question. I answered your question. Why support Collins? Is, do you feel like that it's such so important to kind of keep this Republican seat going into um, midterm elections? Despite everything, do you feel like it's important to keep supporting Collins? Uh, well, this is uh, an R plus to get technical, and it's R plus 11. It's a very Republican seat. Uh, they appreciate Donald Trump. They appreciate his early support. He was the first member of Congress to support Donald Trump. And he's done very good for his constituents, in part because of his good relationship with the White House. That always helps. And he's been very good for those uh, constituents. They will understand that he is innocent till proven guilty. And I think uh, he's going to have a very successful election. Yeah, though, Chairman, it's, it's, a, it's a really bad look. Uh, I don't know what Nate Murray's going to run from a campaign perspective, but I've got to admit, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty bad look. Uh, there, we do have a rule of law in this country. And uh, the, the basic laws concerning incited trading, and I'm a securities lawyer, are very squishy. Uh, people, convictions on this that were the Southern District got 
uh, Preparawa got were overturned one after the other when they got up to the higher court level. So we'll have to see how it works out. Until then, the rule of law is he's innocent till proven guilty. You, you came to this meeting ready to replace him, and I'm sorry if I missed some of this, I got here late. You came to this meeting ready to replace Collins, right? So you were intending to do that. No, the, the, the people... That wasn't the no, purpose well, of the meeting? He, no, 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 apparently uh, was. I may have that wrong. So. Uh, uh, the uh, Chris Collins announced that he would not be running. At that point, the eight uh, county committees that are involved started, got together to work out what they would do. Now he's announced that he's going to run. So they have ceased working on what they were working on. It's pretty straightforward. And he will be the candidate going forward because that's his choice whether he gets off or, or not. How does this impact Mark Molinero's candidacy and also Keith Wolford, who's running for attorney general? Wolford today was talking about attacking, you know, or taking down corruption. Same with Mark Molinero talking about Cuomo's corruption tour. But in NY27, you have Collins, who has... You, you bet Keith Wolford is going to do that as attorney general of the state. Keith Wolford is a, uh, he comes from Buffalo. He left there in the, uh, after 11th grade with a scholarship to Harvard, Harvard Law School. 25 years later, he's one of the most successful lawyers in New York City. He wants to give something back to his state, and he decided to run for attorney general after Snyderman uh, resigned from, uh, from attorney general. And uh, he is, just wants to be a good lawyer representing the state of New York. And, and he's not looking to run for a higher position. And he is, the, he is the person who will, honestly, for the first time we will have an attorney general, as opposed to a Spitzer, a Cuomo, and a Schneiderman, all of whom were playing politics and looking to go to a higher position. Uh, Keith Wolford just wants to do his job as attorney general, or return to that tradition of being a people's lawyer, which, like Louis Lefkowitz or, or, or Bob Abrams, that was a tradition here in New York State. We have to get back to that tradition. And as a professional lawyer who has been successful in private practice as a lawyer, that's all he wants to do. That's what New York needs at this point. Do you think I Mark Molinero can make his case? Do you think Mark Molinero can make his case to voters. We asked him this this morning. He's talking oh. about corruption and Cuomo. Cynthia Nixon just couldn't get that to he, stick. Uh, Mark Molinero is one of the best retail politicians in New York State at this time, if you listen to him. He knows how to make his argument and get it across in a way that people absorb it. Uh, and now that the uh, Nixon-Cuomo thing, which got a lot of people, particularly in New York City, very excited and uh, there was a lot of interest in it. Now that that's over, people are going to focus on Cuomo and Molinaro, and they're going to find one person who's not transparent, who works in the dark, as I say, in the back rooms. He works. He doesn't have real emails. He works on things that, so people can't discover his emails. Uh, he uses government services and offices to run his campaign. Uh, he will intimidate anyone he can intimidate in order to, he has fixed Jacob so it doesn't work uh, in, as far as being an ethical stop on what he's doing. Uh, and you're gonna have Mark Molinaro out there who is going to be making the case, let's just have good, efficient, clean government in New York State and that's what he's gonna present in New York State and that's what he's done in Dutchess County. He's got a good argument to make, and he is a great retail politician who make that argument very well as he gets out there on the hustings and starts making his arguments, and it's Molinaro against Cuomo. Can you do it without money, though? This primary kind of showed that you still need a lot of money for yeah, these races. Uh, he raised more than a million dollars in the first case, and he's raising more, million, uh, more now, and you're going to find... And by the way... Cuomo started with, what, 40 million? I bet he's down below his last 10 million now after he dumped 25 million on Cynthia Nixon. But, but he, was, uh, so, uh, but he was spending $500,000 a day. I mean, that's hard to compete with if Cuomo decides to do that against your candidate. I'm not right? sure he, Cuomo will be able to do that because he has a lot of other pledges to live up to also. He pledged that he's going to take out six or seven of our members of Congress. I tell you, that ain't going to happen now. He said he would take out our majority in the state Senate. He's got, if he wants to do that, he's going to have to and let him try and do it. But I don't think he has the, the, the funds to do all the things that he said he was going to do. And the reason he said all those is that he's running to really to be president of the United States. He wants to go where his father didn't go. He thinks a lot about his father. 
Uh, he regrets he wasn't there to be the under thug for his father so his father could win a fourth term in, in 94. He uh, wants to go where he thought his father should have gone but didn't. After contemplating it, he wants to go there. And that's why his politics are going to the pro progressive socialist kind of level uh, because that's where his national party has gone and that's where the state party's gone. That it helped him assure him of the primary here. It will help him get the presidential. Primary. But meanwhile, how about the people in New York State? The people in New York State need to have a governor who's concerned about the people of New York State, not about their own politics. And for Cuomo, certainly after his first year, has gotten into a mode where it's all about him and his personal ambitions. It's not about what he can do for the people of New York State. You can argue probably the most exciting race in, in Congress is just outside where we are right now in New York 19 with John Faso uh, and Antonio Delgado. It's, it's probably going to be a lot of money spent in that race. We've already seen a gazillion ads uh, on both sides. Uh, how close are you following that race and is John Faso in trouble? Well, I've followed John Faso since he ran for controller yeah, starting in 1990, 1991. I was a great supporter. And this is a person who really cares about New York State wants to do the right thing for New York State. Uh, as you know, he, he ran for governor of New York State when no one else would really do it. Uh, uh, and uh, he finally ran for Congress. He won that seat. He's doing, he's doing his very best for the people that he represents in that 19th congressional district. Delgado is a carpetbagger who came in there last minute uh, who doesn't represent the values of the 19th district. That's coming clear, and I think that's going to come clear in all the ads. What Delgado's background is, what John Faso's background is, he was brought up, he's lived in that district, he knows that district backwards and forwards, and he knows how to represent them well in Congress, and that's what he's done during his tenure Do you in think Congress. Diane Neal will be at a, uh, an impact, have an effect on that race? Uh, I don't know her politics, but I, I suspect that she will probably draw more for the Democrats than she will from John Faso, because John Faso's supporters know what he's done and they appreciate what he's done, and I think they're going to hold very fast to him and he will win again. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks. I didn't make a second, did I? No, but